Hi guys, welcome to Sparkster. I'm excited for you to join us today as we're about to demonstrate 15,000 transactions a second arriving in the Sparkster network. So let's get started. On the left hand side, you're looking at our blockchain explorer. And on the right hand side, you're looking at some transaction generators that are generating transactions and sending them to the network. Each one of the boxes is going to be sending transactions to a different cell. And what you'll see us do is load each cell up to about a thousand transactions a second. So let's see that in action. Each box on the right hand side is a different computer that's generating transactions and sending them to the network. We're going to load up three cells and then we're going to take a look at what did those cells receive. As the network approaches 3,000 transactions a second, you'll see that the average across each cell is approaching 1,000 transactions a second. By clicking on cell 1, we begin to collect the blocks and transactions from cell 1. By clicking on any one of the blocks, we're able to see the block hash of that particular block. Similarly, by clicking on any of the transactions, we're able to see the transaction hash, the account or the customer, and the signature. Let's take a quick look at the other cells. You'll see that they're also receiving transactions in parallel, and we'll take a quick look at those transactions and blocks. Finally, we'll also collect the blocks and transactions from cell 3, and we'll take a quick look at those too. Now that we've seen cell 1 to 3 support 1,000 transactions a second, we're going to begin to load four, cells 4 through 8. What you'll immediately notice is that the average per cell will decrease. This is to be expected because the first three cells have 1,000 transactions per second each, but the others have very few while we load them up. It obviously takes more transaction generators to load up cells 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, because those transaction generators or those machines that are generating those transactions are generating them at a fixed rate. And since we have more cells that we're distributing those transactions over, we need more transaction generators. We'll speed this process up a little bit for you. As you can see, we've achieved 8,500 transactions a second across 8 cells, with more than 1,000 transactions a second per cell consistently. Now, we'll begin our journey to 15,000 transactions a second. We're going to speed this up for you so it doesn't take too long. As we begin to load cells 9 through 15, let's take a moment to discuss what we're looking at. So you'll notice that each of the cells have over a thousand transactions a second. And as we were loading cells, there was no degradation in throughput or performance on any of the other cells. This is a critical point and is the key to the Sparkster architecture and how Sparkster can achieve millions of transactions a second. There are no performance implications the more cells that we add because each of these cells is isolated from one another. They are, in effect, separate blockchains. But what might be the benefit of having separate blockchains where a network is able to achieve high throughput and high TPS, but the cells themselves achieve something more reasonable, like a thousand transactions a second? Well, given that Sparkster aims to enable people to be able to build smart software, and be able to run that software at high TPS, this makes perfect sense. It turns out that the isolation 
is very useful for software. Let me give you an example. Suppose we were building a piece of software like Uber. And from Uber's perspective, they need an application that can have really high TPS. So how does Sparks to help in solving that problem? Well, a crude methodology might be to put all customers whose first name begins with A in cell 1, and all customers whose name begins with B in cell 2, and so forth. If we had 26 cells, we'd end up with 26,000 transactions a second. That's one of the core benefits of the Sparks to Decentralized Cloud. And that makes sense from the perspective of software, because there are natural isolation boundaries in software. To go back to the Uber example, Andy never needs to see Bill's trip history, and Bill never needs to see Andy's trip history. Therefore, it makes perfect sense for us to be able to distribute them across different cells where they'll never synchronize. And there you have it, 15,000 transactions a second. Now, let's take a really quick look at some of the blocks and transactions in cells 9 through 15. Thank you so much for joining us.